Okay, <clears throat> six five, tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant graphs. Need to talk about these a little bit. Um, we'll do some examples as well, uh, but these are definitely a little different. And one of the things, if you look at the picture of a tangent, for example, is you should immediately sort of recognize these as asymptotes. And the cotangent also has them. It has one here, and it actually has one here. Um, another difference would be that the period is only pi. So the period for the tangent and the period for the cotangent is pi. Um, let's look at asymptotes a little more in detail. So the tangent has asymptotes at a negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Let's just look at the tangent of pi over 2 for just a moment. So on the unit circle, pi over 2 would be right there at the top, right? So that's pi over 2. And the coordinates there would be 0, 1. Now the tangent of an angle is defined as y over x on the unit circle. So hopefully you can see why you get an asymptote at pi over 2. Now if you go pi over 2 this way, near 0, 1, and you go at pi over 2 this way, you would be, you would be at 0, negative 1, and that would still give you an undefined value. Okay? I can do the same thing for the cotangent, but then this would just happen at the locations that your x is 0. So your x I mean, sorry, that your y is 0. So at 1, 0 for the cotangent, you would get x over y, so 1 over 0 doesn't work, and then at a negative pi. Okay, I'm sorry, I'd say that at a positive pi. Um, let's just go ahead and graph and see where we are. So I'm going to graph 3 plus 4 times the tangent of a half x. So the first thing still is going to be to find the period. Now, the period for the tangent and the cotangent is only pi. So to find the period for this function, you take that and divide it by a half, and so that would be 2 pi. To find your intervals, you're going to do 2 pi times 1 over 4, which is pi over 2. So you're going to make your count by pi over 2. Okay? Right, let's look at up in the initial thing and see how that comes back. So here you see the table. And so for the tangent, the table values that we're really looking for would be a normal tangent goes from a negative pi over 2, counting by pi over 2, so negative pi over 4, 0, pi over 4, up to pi over 2. And then here is the pattern that you're looking for. So this is the pattern that you're looking for in all of your tables. For your cotangent, the pattern is the same except you go from undefined to 1 to 0, the negative 1. So this is reverse. So this one starts low, goes high, starts high, goes low. But this, you know, is the pattern that you're going to look for to create, recreate in each of your tables um, when you do cotangents, okay? All right, so let's continue with this. So then the next thing is you need to find your asymptotes. And I just tried to show you that the asymptotes occur at negative pi over 2 and at pi over 2. Okay, so the question is, when is a half x either equal to a negative pi over 2 or pi over 2? Well, that would be multiplied by 2 when x is a negative pi, or when x is, if you multiply this one by 2, is at a positive pi. This is an asymptote, but it's also the start of the table, and this is the end of your table, if you do everything else right. And we should be ready for that at this point. So now we're going to make a table. Okay, so we're going to start at a negative pi over 2, and I'm going to count by, uh, sorry, I'm going to start at a negative pi. It says you start as in a negative pi, and I'm going to count by pi over 2, so that's a negative pi over 2, plus another pi over 2 is 0, plus pi over 2 is pi over 2, and then plus one more pi over 2, <coughs> and we end at pi. So we have a sort of a way to check our own table if you have some of these things memorized. All right. Then what's the tangent of a half x? Well, the whole reason we did this was so that we could write undefined, start low, go through 0, end high, and have another undefined. Okay? And that does work here, because half of a negative pi is a negative pi over 2, and the tangent's undefined. So then what does the 4 do? Well, it does the same thing that it did for the sine and the cosine, except undefined still undefined. So, but that would be negative 4, that would be 0, and that would be 4. And then the last thing is that we have a 3 there. So what happens with 3 plus 4 times the tangent of a half x? 
Well, so you're just going to add 3 to each of the values. So that's a negative 1, that's 3, and that's 7, and that would still be at undefined. Well, then that allows me to go ahead and graph it. So now I'm going to graph it. I'm going to, cheat. I'm going to call this the x-axis. So the y-axis is going to run up to 7, so that's a negative 1. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7. So there's 7. And let's see, I go two this way, so two tick marks that way, mark an asymptote, so this is x is a negative pi. Two tick marks that way, and then this is an asymptote, so that is x equals pi. And then I can plot a negative one, and then three, one, two, three, and seven over here. And so your curvature looks a lot like this. And that's what the tangent looks like. Now let's look at the cotangent. Start the same way. Period. I'm going to take pi and divide it by 2. Multiply by 1 over 4. So that's pi over 8. So I'm going to count by pi over 8 in the table. And the asymptotes are a little bit different. Okay, keep in mind that the asymptotes here should be when the cotangent is either at 0 or when the cotangent is at pi, so we want to know when is 2x equal to 0, when is 2x equal to pi. So this one's still 0, this one would be a pi over 2, so that 0, other than an asymptote, is also the start of the table, and then this is the end of the table. So now I'm ready to make a table. So we have x, we want to start at 0, we want to count by pi over 8, so 1 pi over 8, 2 pi over 8, which is pi over 4, 3 pi over 8, which does not reduce, and 4 pi over 8, which is pi over 2. So there's again that little check, so it finished where it should have. And then the cotangent of 2x. So the reason we set all this stuff up is so that we could write undefined here and undefined there, and then the cotangent cotangent starts high, so it goes through 1 to 0, and then it ends low. And then you can graph it. So this one goes from 0 to pi over 2. So 1, 2, 3, 4 tick marks. So that is an asymptote. I usually don't mark the, the middle one for here because you, know, you need to go right through it. And then this was an asymptote, so I marked that real quick. So, and then let's see where you're going from 1 to 0 to negative 1. And then this is what the cotangent looks like. All right. How about the cosecant and the secant? Well, they're definitely different. Really different picture here, okay? Um, but I'm going to show you something here. So, if I draw a regular sign in here, then you can sort of see that these meet here, here, and here, and that the asymptotes are occurring where your sign is zero. Well, I'm going to use that knowledge because basically to, or basically to graph a cosecant, I'm going to do this. Okay, it's the base for the cosecant is sine of x. Okay. And I'm going to get asymptotes when sine of x is equal to 0. Well, the secant, the base for the secant, is our cosine of x. And I'm going to get asymptotes when the cosine of x is equal to zero. And that's how I'm going to graph this. So I'm literally going to transform this into a sine or a cosine. So what does that look like? Well, so here, instead of graphing this, I'm going to graph this. I'm going to graph 2 plus cosecant is a sine of 4x. So the first thing that you do is find your period. Still 2 pi divided by 4, so this is pi over 2. When you multiply by 1 over 4 to find your count bias, you end up with pi over 8 again, just like the previous one. Then you're ready to make a table. So start at 0, 
come by pi over 8. So 1 pi over 8, 2 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, and 4 pi over 8, which is pi over 2. And there's a check. Because that matches the period. Okay, so what is the sine of 4x? Well, at 0, the sine is 0. Then it goes to 1, back to 0, down to negative 1, back to 0. And this is where the table is a little different. Everywhere I have a 0 right now, I'm going to write undefined, so that I do not forget that that is actually going to be an asymptote. Okay? After I do that, I'm back to the original, or to, uh, to the function that I'm trying to graph, which is 2 times the sine of 4x, so, or 2 plus the sine of 4x, so that means I need to add 2. So that's at 2, that's at 3, that's at 2, that's at 1, and that's back at 2. And then again, I am going to tell me that, yeah, I know there's going to be a, sort of a dot at 2, here, here, and here, but that really ought to be an asymptote through there. So that when you graph this, you end up with a picture that makes sense. So let's see. We need mostly positives. So we'll do the the original or the sign, we're going to do this in red. So 1, 2, 3, 4. And this is pi over 2. And we are at, let's see, 2, 3, 2, 1, and 2. So 1, 2, and 3. So at 0, we're at 2. At 1, we're at, the next one, we're at 3. We're back at 2, down to 1, and up to 2. Now I'm going to lightly dot this. It's not really the graph I want. And then now I'm going to use these things over here. So everywhere that I have that undefined written, I'm going to take the graph and cut it. So there's an asymptote right there. And then it says that pi over 4, which is in the middle, there should be an asymptote. So I'm going to make an asymptote through there. I'm going to make an asymptote through here. So this is actually an asymptote. And then the graph comes from taking this dot and then just literally curving it this way. So imagine that you cut it over here and that you then rotated this down. And then here, if you cut the point here and here and then rotate it up, then you get a shape that looks like this. And that's it. And that's what the blue is, what 2 plus the cosecant of 4x would look like. Okay. Last one then, so 2, the secant of a half x. Uh, I'm going to find a period first, but keeping in mind that I'm actually more interested in graphing this one right now. Okay, so the period is going to be 2 pi for this cosine. If I divide it by a half, actually the period is 4 pi. So I multiply that by 1 over 4. Sorry, I'm ahead of myself in my mind. So if I multiply that by 1 over 4, then this is what I'm going to count by. I'm going to count by pi in my table. So here's x. x starts at 0 and then 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and 4 pi. And that would give me the cosine of a half x. So the cosine starts at 1, then at 0, then at a negative 1, up to 0, back at 1. And then I need to remind myself of the same thing. That means that if you have a zero here, actually I need an undefined value there. And then now I'm going to go back to multiplying, in this case, by 2. Because that's what that 2 does. So I'll be at 2, still at 0, negative 2, 0, and 2. And then I can graph. And so, graph the axis. So you can see here. There and we'll do this one in red again. So, what do we have? Four equal tick marks. So, one, two, three, four. So, that's four pi right there. Okay, so at zero, I would be at two, and then I'm at zero, and then I'm at a negative two, and then I'm at zero, and then I'm at two. I'm going to lightly dot what the cosine would have looked like. And then at pi and at 3 pi, so this is pi, that's 3 pi, because this is 2 pi, I'm going to cut this graph right through there, and then that's actually an asymptote. 
and so that is also an asymptote. So this asymptote is at 3 pi, and this asymptote is at pi, and I can flip it and turn. But now I'm missing a little bit of information here, so, or I'm, I'm missing my next asymptote. So I'm going to put another tick mark over there which actually means that I probably should erase this 4 pi because now it looks like it's over there. 4 pi is supposed to be over there. Okay, so that was 4 pi here. So that's at 5 pi. That gets to be an asymptote. So I'm going to mark it this way, cut it through. So then allows me to flip this and actually get all of that instead of just this measly little half bracket. And then we get this one. I have to cheat a little, make that dot a little bigger. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. So that's one tick mark over. So that's then a negative pi. So that I can flip this one as well. And there you go. That's what it looks like. Thanks.